five. Ask the guy next to you, did you think this grace is cheaper? <laughs> it takes you all. To minister this grace, it will take, you, take everything of you. Amen. Amen. To receive this grace, God cannot be fooled and He cannot be mocked. You know your heart. Amen. When you are on a sick bed and you promise God many promises if He heals you. <laughs> he knows your heart. He knows what you mean and what you do not mean. When you're on that sick bed, you promise God anything, man. When you are healed, you do exactly what you want to do again. When you're on that sick bed, you promise God, I'll never smoke again. I'll leave the smoking. When you're well and alive again, you say, God, you didn't think I was serious, did you? <laughs> God cannot be mocked. He knows your heart. He knows the intentions of your heart. He knows the motives of your heart. He knows when you promise, make promises, if you are serious in living them out. You say, Lord, if you bless me with finances, I will, I will bless missionaries. I will, give, I will give many tithes to the Lord. Many people say that. One day when I'm rich, God knows the heart. And you see that people, person does not get rich and he does not get blessed. You wonder why he made such big promises to God. Why doesn't the Lord give him the money? Because, I mean, he wants to do many things for the kingdom of God. God is not mocked. He knows the intentions of the heart. Many people have said to God they will do many things and when they get the, the, the means to do that, they don't do it. Say to God, next to God is not mocked. He cannot be deceived. He knows the intentions of the heart. You know the Bible says in Jeremiah, the human heart is desperately sick. Who can understand it? Many promises, many promises that you make to, to the Lord in your difficult situation. Did you lift some of them out? Lord, if you give me my wife back, I'm going to do this and this and this and that and that. When you get your wife back, ah, ah, ah. You just go on as you used to be. Did you keep your promise? Prophetic voice now. Did you keep your promise? Let your yes be yes. And your no be no. Jere, ek beloof ee. As jy dit vir my doen, sal ek dit doen. Moet jy beloof in die ou. Amen. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. What is more of this is of the devil. On our own Savior, I swear I shall do. Do not do that, I mean. It is of the devil what you say. Let your yes be simply yes. Let your no be no, because God knows how feeble people are. They make promises now, later on they break them again, just like that. Say to the guy next to you, to receive this grace. God is looking for upright hearts. He does not look for perfect people. Because we will find none. If he was looking for perfect people, he would find none. But he's looking for upright hearts that mean what they say and say what they mean. Not perfect people, because he will find none. I mean, there's none that is perfect. There's one that was perfect. His name is Jesus. He's not looking for perfect people. He's looking for the hearts of people. He's looking at David. Was David the perfect man? He made mistakes, you But he said about David, I found in David a man after my own heart that will do anything I ask of him. So what made David such a special person that he is remembered even today in such a big way? That even Jesus is called the son of David. What made David such a special person? God said, I found a man after my own heart that will do anything and everything I ask of him to do. This is a heart of the God. Ask the guy next to you, was David perfect? Hey, 
he made many mistakes. And serious mistakes. Jew, very serious mistakes. He paid the price for his mistakes. But God knew when David say, say a thing, he will do it. You know, it was a time when David was uh, for quite some time angry at God. Do you know that? He did not speak to God. When his friend, when they brought the ark back from a Philistine country, it looked like the oxen w w wanted to stumble. And this friend of, very close friend of David, wanted to help the ark not to fall to the ground. You, you, you don't have to help God. He wanted to help and God struck him dead. Boom! David was angry at God. So he had many mistakes in his life. He was angry. He didn't speak for God for some time. But then he saw that the blessing was not in Israel. And, he, and where he left the ark, that person was very much blessed. He was, he was unhappy with God. He left the ark in another man's house. He was so imperfect that he got angry at God. But when, he, when God asked him to do something, he would do it. And when he said to God he will do something, he did it. This is making a man or a woman a person of the God's own heart. Hallelujah. So when David heard the news that this man's house is blessed tremendously, he got and got the ark back again because he wanted the blessing there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I hope you get something what I tell you. God is looking for hearts that are serious with him. If God would look for a, a perfect person, he would find none. Because there was one that was perfect, it was Jesus. But he's looking for people who are serious. When they say to God they will do something, they will do it. When God asks them to do something, they will do that. This is to have a heart of the God.